all right how are you guys doing today hopefully it's good but if not i promise it will get better after this video because we got a really really kind of strange story that we're gonna read today it is diary of one kid blazed and confused this story was requested quite a while ago you know and i've also been gone for like almost a year so <laughs> it's about time to read this story so I haven't read anything like I usually do with these stories because I want it to be completely a surprise. But just going off the title in this picture of Greg we got right here, I assume he's going to be a pothead. Okay. I assume there's going to be some uh, very strange storylines and a lot of weird, um, you know, events that are going to happen in the story. Hopefully revolving around Manny because I, I love that little guy. But anyways, I don't want to waste any of you guys time. I know you've been waiting a long time for a next part in this uh, series, so <laughs> let's hop straight into Diary of Wimpy Kid, Blazed and Confused. August, Saturday. Damn. Feels like an eternity since I've written in one of these things. Where do I even begin? Not a lot has changed around here, after all. Roderick has been living at home since he graduated from high school, spending his days sleeping and watching TV. Dad has tried to force him to get the job plenty of times, but Roderick seems content with doing nothing. After all, what was Dad really going to do about it? He's a gigantic pussy who takes his life's frustrations and failing marriage out on his kids. Mom hasn't changed at all, still being an overbearing bitch. Manny is in elementary school now, but he's still a little demon spawn. Yeah, I mean, I assumed we all thought he was going to be like that. He's always locked away inside his room. I don't even want to think about what goes on in there. As for me, well, to put it frankly, I've been waiting to escape this hellhole for the past four years. I always thought that middle school was rough, but high school was much worse. Everyone becomes a colossal douchebag and the people that you think are your friends will just bail you out of nowhere. It also didn't help that my balls didn't drop until junior year. Look, bitch boy has a purse. Actually, it... <clears throat> is a handbag. Damn, bro. Even after I hit puberty, no one would even pay me any mind. Even my middle school friend Raleigh decided he was too good for me. After he became student body president, he completely ghosted me and began mingling with the popular kids. He even got fucking laid before I did. Apparently, he banged Holly Hills in the gym teacher's office, and it turned into this massive scandal within the school. <laughs> I did not know Raleigh was like that, but I guess he is in this story. So, good for him. I'm going to say this again. I did not have sexual relations with that woman. <laughs> all in all, high school was a mess. I graduated with poor grades, poor social standing, and a poor attitude. I truly feel like I haven't changed at all since middle school. In two days, I'll be cast off on my own to Plainview University, and I am beyond excited to finally have a chance at a fresh start. The days of me being viewed as a wimpy pleb are finally coming to an end. I usually use my left hand, but I felt like switching it up this time. Wow. Sunday. Today was supposed to be an exciting move-in day, but of course my family had to fuck everything up. I woke up early to pack the rest of my school supplies when I noticed a skunky odor emitting from the garage. When I went to investigate, I found my dad smoking my fucking weed. What a fucking deadbeat. I always wondered why I ran out of weed so quickly, and I figured it was Roderick taking my shit. Stealing weed from your own son has got to be an all-time low. Instead of apologizing, dad merely told me to fuck off and not tell mom. I didn't care too much, knowing that mom was having an affair with Vice Principal Roy. Oh my god, okay. <laughs> but now, I needed to re-up on weed before I went off to university. Without it, my anxiety and bipolar disorder really began to act up. Fucking tweaker. <laughs> My old dealer, Albert Sandy, got arrested about a week ago for publicly discriminating hate speech. What? <laughs> okay, um, but Roderick is always blazed, so I know he had a guy who would sell to me. I figured since it was early that he'd be in his usual hibernation, but I was desperate, so I gave it a shot. Upon entering his room, though, I witnessed probably the most fucked up thing I've seen in my 18 years on this godforsaken planet. Roderick was overdosing on heroin? Okay. So, Roderick, he's smoking weed and he's on heroin. This guy, what is he not on? I saw his eyes wide open and initially thought I jolted him awake. But that quickly faded when I noticed a needle laying next to him. 
He also had this weird shit coming out of his mouth. Really, Roderick, I somewhat understood that ketamine addiction, but fucking heroin? That is some shit you never fuck with. Roderick being a waster threw a wrench in my plan to get weed. And I had to put that aside since my brother was dying. I didn't really know what to do though. I've never dealt with an overdose before. Dad was cooked, so he was no help. But I knew mom was usually awake pretty early. Surprisingly enough, I found her in the living room. She's usually using the shower head to get off. What? <laughs> She's usually using the shower head to get off right now. But maybe dad finally pleasured her last night. What is going on in this household? Oh, man. Okay. I updated her on the Roderick situation, but she didn't really seem to think it was a big deal. Your son is literally dying. Mom told me to just worry about packing my bags and that she'd get around to it eventually. I guess there's nothing I could do to help him myself. So I just left it at that. I felt a little bad at first since it's apparent that my parents don't give a fuck about him. But Roderick is a dumbass himself for shooting heroin. Mom taking care of Roderick allowed me to return to my dilemma at last. I really didn't want to do this, but I'd be lying if I said I wasn't fiending a little bit. It was officially time for my last resort option. What's Bracken Playa? <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> Not Fregly, bro. What is he doing? Yup, Fregly is a massive stoner now. Well, the medicated kind. He got prescribed medical marijuana after he turned 18. And boy, has it worked wonders for that kid. He doesn't do any of the weird shit he used to in middle school anymore. He just sparks a daub and listens to Wu-Tang Clan in his yard all day. I have to give it to him. He's come a long way. Fregley wanted to shoot the shit and catch up, but I was on a time crunch, so I shot that down real quick. I cut to the chase and told him that I really needed some weed, and that I had 20 for maybe an eighth. Unfortunately, Fregley had a different idea. This shit is top shelf, bro. I can do $50 for a G. That prick was upcharging the fuck out of me. I had no idea how I was going to come up with 30 bucks, but I knew Fregley had weed, and that was one step away from getting some sticky icky icky. What the fuck? <laughs> I booked it back to my place to search for some cash. While looking, I bumped into dad sulking in the kitchen. He was about a half bottle deep into some bourbon, but that was nothing new. Dad always puts alcohol before obligations. Looking back, I can definitely recall a few times I smelled liquor on his breath in, in unbenefiting situations. I think you just ran someone over. Quit your bitching, I do this all the time. <laughs> I asked dad if he could spare me 30 bucks. After all, he was the reason I was scrounging for weed. Dad completely lost it. I braced myself as he launched his bottle across the kitchen and began blabbering some drunken nonsense about his pitiful life. I thought I have heard it all from my alcoholic father at this point, but he started to get really specific during this outburst. He complained about his dead-end job, Manny being the result of a broken condom, and how all his life's problems are rooted in having a micro-penis. Out of nowhere, though, he started bitching about me. You're a beta, Greg. It took every ounce of self-resistant within me to not let <laughs> Batista bomb that fucker through the kitchen table right there. Enraged, I stormed out the door, turned up the street, and just walked. Walked and walked and walked. I guess it was my way of coping with the dysfunction. Nowadays, my house is more like a MW2 lobby <laughs> than a loving home. 1v1 me, you little shits, noob. Dad, you suck. I don't know how long I walked or how many aimless turns I made. I was completely zoned out. All I know is that I somehow ended up downtown and that I was starting to get pretty fidgety since I haven't gotten high yet. I needed to act fast to get the cash for Fregley. After spending a few minutes scanning the hustle and bustle of the crowd, I came up with an impulsive yet foolproof plan to make some money. What the fuck? <laughs> That's his impulsive and foolproof plan, just to snatch some old lady's purse. <laughs> I can't say I'm too proud of myself for jumping a vulnerable old lady, but goddamn, that was easy. She had even more than 30 bucks I needed, so it's safe to say that my plan was a great success. I hauled the cab back to Fregley's place, drooling at the prospect of smoking the finest green. It wasn't until I flashed the money when I realized this plan all along was to fuck with me. Your struggles arouse my secret freckle, Greg. Apparently, Fregley is not upset over the way I treated him in middle school. 
Whatever. That kid is a bona fide weirdo with or without the medical cannabis. The funny thing is that I thought I had been pretty kind to him over the past few years, but I guess it wasn't enough. Fuck that guy. I told Fregley to eat shit and I dragged myself home. A single tear trembled down my cheek as I kicked myself for letting things get this out of hand. What kind of person robs an elderly lady for weed? I would call myself a junkie, but I know that I could totally quit whenever I want. I couldn't mope for long enough though, because I was shocked by what greeted me at home. Rochick was alive, but more importantly, he was holding a bag of weed. I guess I had discovered him just in time for mom to call the paramedics. So he called his dealer and bought me a half ounce of bud as recompensence. I guess Rochick also had a come to Jesus moment during his overdose because he's now applying as a late enrollee, uh, I think that's what it says, at Plainview University. Good for him. Since I finally had weed, the rest of the move-in process went smoothly. Mom dropped me off at my dorm about an hour ago, but since I spent most of my day mucking about, it was too late to go to any parties. I didn't care though. I had my weed, my new Twisted Wizard DLCs, and I was finally away from my insufferable family. Operation Fresh Start starts tomorrow. Thursday. My first week at Plainview University has been busy, but I've never felt more free in my life. There's truly nothing more liberating than being able to play video games or beat my meat whenever I want. My classes are a breeze too. Most of them are gen ed bullshit but I'm particularly interested in my gender studies course. Roderick is in that class with me, and suffice to say it's been a big boost to the course's entertainment value. Where's the clitoris again? I don't care too much about gender equality, but there are a ton of girls in the class. The craziest part is that they actually talk to me. I can't re even remember the last time a female willingly conversed with me. So Greg, are you a virgin? Nah, I totally fucked. So far, I've been living the dream. School is light, chicks are falling into my lap, and the weed is being smoked. I don't think my week could get any better until one of the girls in class invited me to her Thirsty Thursday party. I'm on a roll with this newfound bravado, so I'd be a fool to not check it out. After letting it settle for a few days, I realized that mogging that lady was actually a real confidence boost for me. Something about it just felt empowering. I've even thought about going to the gym. Just thinking about seeing everybody's reaction to my self-reconstruction really gets my juices flowing. What do you mean by that? The party starts in just over an hour, so I need to get ready soon. I cannot wait to come back to this chronicle a legendary boost-filled night. Maybe I'll even get laid. As of today, nothing can stop the new and improved Greg Hefley. Right now, the world is my oyster. Friday. Last night's party didn't play out the way I had envisioned. Not even in the slightest. I'm trying to keep my cool as I write this, but my life has taken a staggering turn for the worst. When I arrived at the party, everything seemed normal. Kids were drinking, dancing, and playing beer pong while obnoxiously loud rap music blared. I poured myself a drink and got into the action. My first move was to find this girl named Skye from my gender studies course. I felt like I had built some momentum with the witty Bush did 9-11 joke in her class earlier and I was looking to seal the deal with some magnificent coitus. As I bumped into the kitchen searching for her though, I was met with a very familiar face instead. Rowley Jefferson. I couldn't believe it. Here, standing before me, was the dude who left me friendless after middle school. If I had a few more drinks in me, I would have kicked the selfish tool's ass, but I was low on liquid courage. It didn't matter though. Because Rowley started apologizing to me. Haha, <laughs> that's gold. Sorry for posting your IP address on 4chan, man. I can't say I expected to make amends with an old friend at the party, but I'll gladly take it. After we exchanged a bro hug, I offered to smoke out Rowley with the weed I brought. He hesitated at first and told me he's never smoked before, but he eventually gave in after I showed him what I was working with. We entered the nearest bathroom sparked a joint, and chopped it up as if we'd never left middle school. Zoo wee fucking mama. Rowley got mega baked. It was actually pretty hysterical, but I didn't make a big deal about it since we were having a good time. After we let the high marinate for a bit, Rowley left to go fetch us some more drinks. Since I still needed to try to hook up with Sky, 
I was all for drinking until I gained the confidence to make a move. Rally soon returned with the drinks. After giving me my cup, he excitedly raised his drink and offered a toast to the occasion. Here's to our renewed friendship. We tapped our plastic cups together and I downed my drink, which was just some shitty cheap beer that Rally grabbed from the keg. I've never been a huge fan of the way beer tastes, but something about this particular drink seemed super off. I collapsed to my knees and the room began spinning around me, uh oh, overwhelmed by the wooziness. Uh, this was only my second drink. How could I feel this intoxicated already? Panicking, I turned to Rally to see if he was also feeling the effects of the vomit-inducing beverage. Instead, he was just watching me with this mischievous grin on his face. He was right, that is a mischievous ass face. I guess I shouldn't have trusted Rally, because that rat bastard fucking roofied my drink. I don't know if it was Xanax or ecstasy or what. But my vision began to steadily blur, and I was starting to lose my balance. As Riley cackled at me, I stumbled out of the bedroom and made my way towards the exit, dodging drunk and sweaty kids the whole way. I can't recall too much from the time I exited the house to the time I passed out, but I do remember feeling like a fool for letting Riley trick me. Some people just truly never change. I was awoken at the crack of dawn by the pitter-patter of echoing footsteps. My vision was still a bit fuzzy from the night before, but when my eyes finally began to adjust, I noticed that I was in some sort of large basement-like room. Internally, I was freaking out. I had just spent most of the week binge-watching horror movies, so my mind immediately went to some dark places while thinking about what was going to happen to me down there. As the footsteps grew near, I resigned myself to the fate of having my mouth sewn to somebody else's asshole for the rest of my life. The footsteps then suddenly ceased, being replaced by deep breathing and a sharp snap of fingers. After a few seconds of silence, the mysterious figure began to speak. Well, well, isn't this quite the surprise? I pinched myself as hard as I could, for I thought I was still in a Xanax-infused nightmare. That voice. I knew that voice, but I just couldn't come to grips with the fact that I was hearing it in this dingy cellar. Between seeing my older brother overdose, stealing money for weed, and being drugged by rally, no feeling of disappointment in any of those moments came close to the profusion of horror I felt hearing this voice. <sighs> you fucked up, Gregory. I wasn't dreaming after all. My own grandpa had kidnapped me, brought me into a cellar in who knows where, and looked as if he could kill a man. There was also another guy with him, some sort of assistant, I guess. Grandpa introduced him as Tom. I asked Grandpa where I was and what he wanted to do with me. He smirked, saying that there were a few reparations that I needed to pay. This befuddled me. What the fuck does Grandpa want from me? I always figured that being his favorite grandson spared me from any of his antiquated hijinks. Gregory is my favorite. Grandpa twiddled his suspenders as Tom placed a box at his feet at the grimy floor. Without breaking eye contact with me, he opened the box, reached inside, and shuffled its contents around. Eventually, he emerged from the box with a brick of marijuana in one hand and a gun in the other. I jumped back as Grandpa began toying with the gun, occasionally pointing at me and arrogantly chuckling while he did so. He then raised the weed brick and finally explained why he abducted me. You've given my business partner a heart attack. At first, I had no clue what he was talking about. Grandpa must have noticed my bewildered expression as he fished for one last item from the box that cleared up my role in this predicament. It was a picture of the old lady that I robbed. Grandpa described the old lady as one of his falcons, which just seemed like a fancy way to call somebody a low-level drug dealer. Apparently, she provided a crucial connection to the Leisure Towers, which is huge because old people have nothing better to do than get high. And then, you keistered the Mr. Potato Head doll. Yeah, it's kind of a talent of mine. I couldn't believe this shit. Grandpa is a drug lord? He has an entire operation going on with growers, distributors, and street-level dealers. The craziest thing about all of this was the fact that he was able to keep this a secret from his family. But then again, everyone's had their own personal issues to deal with. Dad's a drunk, mom's a hook. She's a hooker? We didn't know that. And Roderick and I are druggies. I was actually kind of pissed that Grandpa was hogging all this money to himself. If he had shared some with me, I would have an endless supply of cocaine and strippers. 
What else would I really need after all? I couldn't be angry for long though, as Grandpa began offering his proposition for me. And because I was responsible for his associate's heart attack and lost business at Leisure Towers, he wanted me to repay my debts by working as one of his drug dealers at Plainview University. I always figured that I'd be rich and famous one day, but was I really going to reach that point by going full Scarface with my Grandpa? Is it true that he called El Chapo a midget to his face? What led you down this dark path, Mr. Hefley? El Chapo ain't got shit on me. Grandpa could tell I was reluctant to accept his offer. It's the only possible explanation for what he did next. What the fuck? I no longer had a choice. This wasn't my mirthful, watercress, salad-loving grandfather that I was dealing with anymore. I had become indebted to a deranged, homicidal drug kingpin. And unfortunately, like a lot of these stories, the guy didn't end up making the rest of the story which sucks but you guys know how it is Uh, this happens a lot with a lot of different stories with these fan fictions but i don't know this one was actually really good i I don't know what it was about it it was just very interesting it was different man he wasn't the center of the story for once um he actually didn't have like a huge part at all he was just in his room yeah this would have been a really really cool story to go on with um greg's grandpa being the drug kingpin greg having uh, a debt with him so he was basically forced to join in on the business but snoo pairs six five four one if you somehow end up seeing this video i know you haven't posted in two years but please end the story because this is a very interesting one and one that would be awesome to completely just finish but that's gonna do it for me hopefully you enjoyed this video as always if you enjoyed make sure to leave a like and subscribe for more diary of a wimpy kid fan fiction stories if if and this is a huge if snoo pairs 6541 decides to come back and make the rest of the story you know i'm gonna make a part two to it of course i am again that's gonna do it for me hope you enjoyed the video and i hope you have a good rest of your day or night depending on when you're watching this and i'll see you in the next one See ya.